how do you know if the supplements you're taking are right for you? My name is Molly and I'm a registered dietitian. The best way to determine what supplements you need are through a blood test. A blood test can measure lots of different blood biomarkers related to health and nutrition such as vitamin B12, vitamin D, iron, and magnesium to name a few. Um, and if those results are suboptimal, it may mean that your current diet and lifestyle are lacking in certain areas and a boost through a supplement may be beneficial. Uh, keep in mind a blood test can also reveal that um, you don't need any supplements or that you are over supplementing and we see that pretty regularly with vitamin B12. A healthcare provider or personalized nutrition guidance can help shed light on what supplements that you should be taking uh, because it will differ from person to person. You also want to make sure the supplements you're taking are backed by science. So if you're taking um, a capsule from a bottle that says improve sleep, um, you got to make sure those ingredients uh, listed on the label have actually been scientifically proven to support sleep. Supplements may play a role in improving signs of aging, such as lowering blood pressure, lowering cholesterol levels, um, reducing oxidative stress, and even alleviating joint pain. Uh, but these recommendations are only viable when there's enough scientific evidence supporting them. And with a lot of supplements, the science is still evolving. So the three we're gonna talk about now are quercetin, glutathione, and NAC. Quercetin is the most abundant flavonoid in the diet and is found in fruits and vegetables like apples, onions, and broccoli, as well as black tea and wine. Evidence on quercetin and its effects on cardiovascular health, such as blood pressure uh, and cholesterol, are either not significant um, or there's mixed results. So at this time, quercetin is not a supplement recommendation you would see um, from your inside tracker results. Glutathione is often regarded as the master antioxidant. Um, it plays a role in regulating oxidative stress in the body as well as regenerating antioxidants. It is endogenously produced, meaning the body makes it inside itself. It's not um, a nutrient that is consumed in the diet. However, um, this compound can also um, be synthetically made and in supplemental form. Studies show that as you age, levels of glutathione in the body decrease and um, in people that have um, chronic diseases, levels of glutathione appear to be lower than in healthy individuals. However, supplementing with glutathione to increase internal glutathione levels and then have that impact um, measurable health outcomes is not conclusive. So despite the biochemical potential of glutathione supplements, uh, there's not enough evidence at this time to support the use of glutathione for um, anti-aging or longevity outcomes. Lastly, let's discuss NAC. NAC or N-acetylcysteine is the supplemental form of cysteine. So when it's absorbed in the body, it gets converted to that amino acid cysteine, which is one of the three building blocks to glutathione. So the idea is to supplement with NAC to increase levels of glutathione in the body. Research has shown that NAC supplements do not consistently raise glutathione levels and that supplementation may actually be detrimental to athletic performance. Muscle growth occurs when the rate of muscle protein synthesis is greater than that of muscle protein breakdown. And one factor that influences the breakdown of muscles is the hormone cortisol. Cortisol is often referred to as the stress hormone as times of mental, physical, or emotional stress can raise cortisol levels. Cortisol is a catabolic hormone, and when cortisol levels are elevated for prolonged periods of time, that can start to break down muscles. And that's where the supplement ashwagandha comes into play. Ashwagandha is an herbal supplement that's often coined an adaptogen as it helps the body cope with stress. Supplementing with ashwagandha can decrease cortisol levels by up to 27%. And in men, it can actually increase testosterone um, by 17%. In addition, studies show that supplementing with ashwagandha can improve raw strength, um, VO2 max, um, inflammation, as well as um, markers of cholesterol. 
Are you looking to improve your recovery from exercise? You may want to consider these three supplements. Supplements can't take the place of refueling, hydrating, and rest after strenuous activity. But research shows that there are some supplements that can promote recovery and improve healing post-workout. So the first one is collagen, and collagen is the most abundant protein in the body and is a com key component of connective tissues like tendons and ligaments. Uh, inadequate collagen levels in the body have been associated with joint pain. And research shows that supplementing with collagen may improve joint pain for those who are already experiencing some degree of joint pain. These supplements can be taken any time of day and doses of anywhere from five to 15 grams have been shown to be beneficial. The next supplement is curcumin and curcumin is the main active ingredient of turmeric. And while you can find it naturally in the spice, it can also be found in supplemental form in much higher quantities. Curcumin supplements can help promote recovery by improving muscle damage as well as keeping inflammation under control. Um, these supplements can be taken uh, before, during, or after workout. The last supplement is branched chain amino acids. These include leucine, isoleucine, and valine. They're essential because the body cannot produce them naturally and you have to consume them through the diet. Branched chain amino acids may promote recovery by improving muscle protein synthesis as well as improving muscle soreness. There are a lot of supplements available on the market and as a consumer you want to make sure you're getting um, a high quality one that is efficacious and that the ingredients on the label are what is actually in the supplement. If you're doing some online shopping, you can look at third-party websites such as Labdoor or ConsumerLabs.com. Uh, these websites look at ingredient quality as well as different third-party certifications that supplements have received. If you're shopping in person, you can also look for um, certifications on the bottle. Uh, for example, this one has a USP certification. And if you're a competitive athlete, you'll wanna look for the NSF Sports Safe label. Supplements are most effective at certain doses and many healthcare providers and the supplement recs you'll see from Inside Tracker will recommend a specific supplement at a specific dose to see the desired outcome. A higher dose does not mean that the supplement will be more effective and taking excessively high doses, especially for prolonged periods, can even pose health risks. On the other end, um, choosing a dose that is too low may not lead to the desired outcome. Uh, for example, to maintain my optimal vitamin D levels, I take 1,000 IU per day of vitamin D. However, someone with suboptimal levels may benefit from taking a higher dose to see elevated levels. Different supplements may need to be stored in different environments. And if you look at the packaging, you'll be able to see what that supplement needs in order to maintain high quality until the expiration date. The storage discussion is most notable among probiotics. Uh, some probiotics need to be refrigerated, um, whereas others do just fine at um, a cool room temperature. And it's typically, typically advised to keep fish oil uh, supplements refrigerated after opening to prevent any excess oxidative damage. Should you take all your supplements together? No. Here's what you need to know about when and how to take your supplements for optimal results. Some supplements are best taken with food and these include vitamins A, D, E, and K. These are the fat soluble vitamins and are best absorbed from the digestive tract when there is also fat present. So you can take these really any time of day. Uh, we just recommend taking it at the same time as a meal to make sure that the fat is present in the digestive system. Some supplements are best absorbed with water, and those will be the water-soluble vitamins, uh, vitamin C, and all of the B vitamins. These water-soluble vitamins can also really be taken any time of day. Just make sure you have them with a big glass of water. 
Some nutrients actually pair nicely together and can increase absorption if they're taken at the same time. Uh, a great example of this is vitamin C and iron. Uh, vitamin C can actually boost the absorption from iron, whether that's from supplements or for, from foods. And supplement companies know this. So many iron supplements on the market are already paired with vitamin C. So check the label to see if that's true for the one that you're taking. And this trick holds for foods as well. So if you have a big spinach salad with a lemon dressing, um, the vitamin C from the lemon will increase iron absorption from spinach. So most minerals should be taken separately. Um, that includes magnesium, zinc, iron, and calcium, um, as they often just compete for the same absorption sites in the body. So if you supplement with um, both iron and magnesium, consider taking iron in the morning um, and magnesium before bed. For um, those multivitamins that usually contain um, a bunch of vitamins and minerals in the same capsule, this is a downfall to those, as well as some um, supplements marketed for bone health often contain vitamin D, calcium, and maybe even magnesium in the same supplement. So in those cases, you'll wanna make sure you space out um, different mineral supplementation throughout the day. Some supplements can also have side effects. If you're looking at a supplement recommendation from Inside Tracker, um, the potential side effects will be listed out within that recommendation. So before you start it, you can see what to be on the lookout for. And if you're wanting to take multiple supplements at the same time, it's always best to introduce one um, before the other and give it a few weeks, just so if you do experience any side effects, you're able to pinpoint what supplement it might be. Taking a supplement won't instantaneously improve your health um, and it definitely won't compensate for um, a poor diet, lack of sleep, or unmanaged stress. However, it can be part of a broader uh, solution to address those concerns. Before adding a new supplement to your regimen, you should always talk with a healthcare provider or even a pharmacist, especially if you're introducing multiple supplements or if you're on any prescription medications uh, because supplements can interact with each other as well as those medications.